when you come out of it, you also will need some confidence. Right. Now y'all got to recall. Y'all got to recall. I know I got Bible readers in here. Amen? Amen. You got to recall when the Jews had been taken into captivity. Come on. They knew it would be 70 years before they was going to come out of that thing. Right. Now you got to go spiritual with me for 2016. Right. Just imagine ISIS have the United States in captivity. Come on, right. Imagine you happen to live, you happen to think, you happen to eat, you happen to do everything that they are doing that you are not accustomed to. You're going to need some confidence. You're going to need some confidence while you're in it. And when you come out of it, you're going to need some because your mind has been transformed to a way that you are not accustomed to. Amen? Now, let's be real in here this morning. How many of you have been in captivity with a situation? Or you have been in bondage with a relationship where your faith in God had been called into question. Right. Will the Lord bring me out of this? All right, all right. Let, me, let, me, let me take you back somewhere when I was growing up about eight years old. I had an aunt named Nancy. But I had an Uncle Buddy who worked hard for Caterpillar, but he got drunk all the time. On Friday, he would argue and fight and push her. And on Saturday morning, when he came in, she had just had gone to bed. But I used to hear all the time, said, Lord, when you going to come by here and see about me? She needed some confidence because this took place every week. That relationship, she was in a bondage with that. Now, you have to picture Israel in that type of bondage. You have to picture them praying every day. Lord, when are you going to come by and see about us? You, you, you just got to sometimes come out of that Bible, this Bible, and go into your own situations that you have. Because I know for a fact, a lot of us won't say it, but some of us in captivity in here. Come on. And you are asking God, when are you coming to see about me? Now in this text, Isaiah goes on to tell about the suffering servant, Jesus Christ. Isaiah goes on to tell about Jesus' life and death with great details. Now, you got to catch this. That was in the Old Testament. He's telling about Jesus' life. And as you know, the Old Testament reveals the New Testament, and the New Testament confirms the Old Testament. But just think about this. Jonah, in the belly of the well, the son of man, will be in the earth for three days. Jesus was there all the time. A lot of people think he just came about in the New Testament. That's not true. This text, Isaiah goes on to speak of the new heaven and the new earth. When God's people, don't miss that, when God's people will participate in that. When all believers, when all believers will be delivered. I said two people, God's people and believers all the time believers. See, in other words, you can't be a light switch believer. That's an off and on, on believer. Come on, in the text, I want to stay with the text because I want you to understand, I want you to see something because I'm taking you somewhere. In the text, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, it says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of of the earth. In other words, he had already heard them. They was letting, he was letting them know, Isaiah was letting them know, he knew everything already. He knew what's going on. He knew that this was going to take place before the Garden of Eden. But right now, what I'm saying, sisters and brothers, you got to understand whatever you're going through right now, the comfort is already there. It, it, it's already there. If you got a sickness, it's already going to be here. If you got a kid going crazy somewhere, believe me, he will be back soon. But what he's saying is that, do you not know? Have you not heard? Yeah. The everlasting God. Come on. He don't stop. 
Okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was formless and he hovered over the deep. Mm -hmm. He hovered over the deep. In your mind now, he hovered over the deep. The spirit of the Lord hovered over the deep. It was nothing here. It was formless. It was no vegetation. No nothing. God spoke everything in the creation. Yeah, yes, he, did. he was telling them that this must take place to build you. Captivity in a marriage sometimes. Hard times in a marriage sometimes. Even when it ends in divorce. I guarantee you both people who comes out of that thing, the next person they meet, they're going to be better. Sometimes things that happen to you make you better. Uh -huh. Let me ask you something. If it says he created everything mm -hmm. to the ends of the earth, the first breath you took this morning, he created. The Bible said that he blew breath into man. God created of the ends of the earth. In other words, he put everything into motion. And that little part right there, I, I said, the Lord told me, he said, well, just put that little part in there with us so, so they can know. I, I know we got some people that are, are, are eye mentality type people that believe that I only had two nipples together and I rubbed them and that's why I got this. And, and, and they, they want to think that they have done everything for themselves. But what he's telling Israel right here is that I got to bring you out of this. You cannot bring yourself. Even though you created it. You know, from Egypt all the way through the fort. They created this captivity. A lot of times we create captivity. We create it, but guess who we called on to bring us out of it? The Lord. In the text, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 20, it goes on to say, He will not grow tired or weary. Aren't you glad God is not like us? And I want y'all to be real with me on this one. How many of y'all have told somebody, I'm tired of you? <laughs> How many of y'all say, I need to be by myself, you're getting on my nerves? I just need a few real Christians in here. I'm not talking to ones that wake up on Sunday and be, you know, holy and religious. Uh, because you had told somebody, I ain't got it. When you got it, I can't give it to you. You're just making me sick and tired. But we got a God that won't grow tired. And he will not get weary. Right? And no one understands this God. Because the Bible said, and his understanding, no one can factor. I am glad that God is really the only one that understands me. Because a lot of us in here, if we're truthful with ourselves, we don't even understand ourselves. I'm just going to tell you the truth. And when I say that, I'm going to back it up. We make bad decisions. We get in debt. We go make payday loan. We say the wrong things out of our mouth to people. We judge people in the wrong way. And when you get by yourself, the first thing you say is, why did I say that? Or why did I do that? What's wrong with me? I should know better than that. And if you knew better than that, that means you would do better than that. But of a lot of us, we don't understand our own self, so we need a God to understand us for us. When, 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 when it get down to it, I used to hear that old lady, Auntie Nancy, she said, but when you get by yourself, just God and you, where you can't lie to yourself and you sure can't lie to God, he reveals who you really are. Not having the understanding. That God had. Now, now picture these 70 years in this wilderness. It was a wilderness because whenever you're in a place that you're not accustomed to, mm -hmm. could you just picture that? Right now what they went through and they seen their family live through those years. They seen new families created. They seen people die off. See, sometime I found out a young man came to me in the penitentiary and he said, Reverend, 
He said, why do church folks stay in the church instead of come out the church like the Bible says? He said, why do the church folks stay in the Bible and cannot bridge their mind outside of the Bible and bring the text into this type of day? He said, because we understand the theological term, we read the Bible, we do it because it's been in there 20 and 30 years. They know the Bible better than we do. But they said that a lot of us are sitting in church and we got some things going on that we need the scripture to tell us how to get out of it. This bondage right here, what I'm bringing you to, everything that you have tried in your life, have you truly broken down right now that you can read everything and you can study everything here, but this thing is based off faith in God? That's why he titled this message, God is all we need. We go and do other things, our mind is going other places, but have you really broken down? I need to talk to the saints and the singers who've been walking with God a long time. When you look back at that long trail that you have tracked, and when you look at the disappointments, when you look at all the things that went wrong and all the things you tried to fix yourself and everything that you created and you went back down that road, when you look at, isn't it true that God is all we need? You, you, you can do anything you want to do. I, I lead the seniors who've been walking a while because us young folks sometimes uh, get into this text and, and we think overnight it's a real fix me quick. We get to listen to Oprah and all these other folks. But I bet you right now, if you ask some of these senior saints who've been walking with God a long time, they'll tell you God is all we need. I had to come to the conclusion of it. So a lot of y'all looking up here at me. Come on, man. You just don't know. I was one of the ones in Israel. Yeah. I was in bondage from 19 years old to 40. I was in the penitentiary. Come on, God has blessed me tremendously. I didn't say Willie and bless me. I said God has blessed me. Yes, yes. I'm the field director for 27 prisons. I'm the pastor of five. I work for the Chuck Colson Center in Washington, D.C. And I'm associate minister down there at Mount Zion First Baptist Church. Can't nobody tell me that God is all I need. In the text, let's go on in the text. Verse 29. It says, it goes on to say, He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Now, we know bondage is in this text. I want you to look back, like I said. Look back at your life. Think about all the storms. You didn't walk through those storms by yourself. You wouldn't be here this morning if you would have walked through those storms by yourself. It's two places you would have been. You would either be in the middle institution or you would be in the grave, God. And why I said that, that is the very definition. Everybody think the day of Pentecost we're just for people to speak tongues. When he said, I'm going to send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. It was for us to make it to those type things that we go through in life. We, we, we cannot go through those things by ourselves. That is a great part that the Holy Spirit gives us. Because when your house is getting ready to be foreclosed on, if you didn't have the Holy Spirit, your mind would leave you. You would, you, you would just, just lose your mind or when something else happens, a disease or cancer or some attack you. What do you think it be that gets you through that? Come on. Jesus and God, if, if it's a lie, the Bible is lying. It said the Father sits up and the Son is sitting at the right side. Who you think is taking care of us this morning? Amen. When some of us have woke up with things that we can't handle. When they woke up and they found themselves well, Daniel and Jeremiah told them that they was going to be. They was doing everything. They were, they were disobedient and everything. But ain't it strange when you find yourself in bondage or captivity, how your mind can automatically revert back to God? <laughs> but I like the part where he say, he don't get tired. He takes us through the storm. He rides with us. He follow us. And the, the, the most important part that we need to believe, young man, even when we don't believe in ourselves, he still believes in us. Yes. Because a lot of us say, well, why am I at this stage in my life? Don't you think Israel said it? 
Now, don't you think they said, well, well, why am I here in bondage? Don't you think you, you, you sometimes ask yourself, how did I get in this situation? But the hardest part that we have to do is tell ourselves, I told my husband I wasn't going to use that credit card and I used it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact, when the bill is two or three thousand dollars, or you have to come and say, you know, I need to tell you something, baby. Uh, you know, we had that money saved to go to, and I took a chance on the scratch off in the lottery. Mm -hmm. You looked at it then, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but just think the thorn, the, the, the storm. Alcohol, drug problems, all the different things that we go through, that we make it through. That's God Amen. giving strength to the weak. Amen. See, I, I, I go to the Baptist Men's Association and, and I sit and I watch all the preachers. I sit there and I watch all of us. And, 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 and sometimes I wonder. Do people realize after we get through doing this for y'all, who gonna do it for us? Come on now. And, and one thing that I've realized that congregations do in church houses, they act like we ain't human. Right. Come on, preacher. Come on, they, 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 they act like we're not human. But what gets me? When God has brought people through situations, Israel had a new praise when they came out. They had a new praise when they came out of Egypt. But what gets me, when church folks can sit in church, know they've been sick, know they've been almost foreclosed on, almost got children in penitentiaries and they own crack and everything else, and God have brought their children out, and they'll sit in church more than they mouth. They'll tell you, say, I got my own way of praising. But see, I got something for you. In the book of Revelation, it says, when you go up there, they're saying, holy, holy, Amen. holy. Yes, holy, holy, holy. And I know I understand people have their own way to praise. But if the word of God tells you you're going to open your mouth, wouldn't it make sense to practice down here? I, 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 I bet you, I bet you. When they're the next, when they're the back, I bet you they start opening their mouth and thanking God. I bet you they were on their knees. I bet you they were praising. I bet you those 70 years, nobody in here could tell me anything about that but one of these seasoned saints. Amen. Who about 80 or 70, 80. And they look back. See, every now and then you have to look back. That same song I was listening to, I came here this morning. I don't feel no way tired. And when I was sitting there going back, the Lord automatically took my mind all the way back to Bessemer, Alabama. All the way through them times that something would have happened to me. All of them times when I should have been dead. All of them times when I could have got killed in the penitentiary. All the times that my mother had did all those things to try to take care of us. All those times that I was in Boston and New York and all those different places where I was in prison and, and I could have got killed over there because I'm from Alabama. And all those he kept me. Yes, he did. Thank you. Come on, look like nobody else. God is all I need. Amen. And we going on, I'm going to hold you too long. Uh, uh, that, you know, you, 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 you got to realize, though, if you don't call on him here, you think you're going to be able to get that call on him? Come on, say it, preacher. But, but, but you, 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 you got to think. And, and, and when, when this thing here, you go read it for yourself when they was in captivity. It's always best to call on him in trouble, out of trouble, good time, bad time, money, no money, bills, high, no bills. Because if you're on this earth, you're going to see some trouble. Isaiah goes on to say in verse 30, even though 
youth grow tired and weary, young man stumble and fall, young man, you gonna get tired. I'm looking right at you. You got a little baby. You gonna get tired. You gonna get weary. But God is the one that gives strength. It's good right now to start where you are because I wish I could turn it back a little bit. Come on. And somebody was looking at me, being called by God. I just ain't stumbled up on this thing because nobody told me that I was going to be here. Did I read it? I looked the same one I had in prison all those years. Same book. Looked like a coloring book. I know what's in it. I didn't have to go to Bishop or anywhere. I know the truth about it. Well, I could bring it from here to here to let you know. You're going to get tired. But guess what? He already got it worked out for you. Before you was born in your mother's womb, he knew you. That it was going to be where you are today. And all I want to do is tell you, you be strong for God, and God will be strong for you. Yeah. This is for all of us. When we feel that life is crushing us, and we can't make our way out of it, You got to realize God is all we need. I don't care what situation comes up. The Lord is all we need. And in this part where it says, you get on wings like eagles. How many of y'all ever seen National Geographic? Come on. When in that where it says, he got up and he stirred the nest. You see him stir the nest. Everybody's seen that way. He kicks them out, and the eagle goes down and put them up under their wings. But it's a part that probably everybody missed. And it, I caught it. After seeing this thing, that preacher, a bunch of times, I caught it. It says eagles don't fly through storms, they fly over. Y'all missed that. In other words, if he's telling us that we're going to mount up on wings like eagles, in other words, he are telling you, church folk, don't deal with folks with a chicken mentality. <laughs> Free yourself from it. said that we will soar. I hope you know who that we is. It's the believers. That's how I broke it to you. Well, all believers, God's people, it said we. When you think you're going, through the storm, when you go through the light bill place and you say, I ain't got no 60 on it, when it's 100, you're going over. All right. Don't miss that, young man. Right. You're going over. And they gave me 30 years, and then I got to nine, when they told me I was going to do 17, and they called me and said, it's time for you to go. With the color pepper at the time, I was going over. They, they was going over it, and they didn't know it when they was in, in captivity. They was going over it. It says, but for those who hope in the Lord. It's for those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. We're going to mount up on wings like eagles. We're not going to get faint. We're going to be strong regardless of whatever goes on in the house of God, whatever goes on in situations, whatever goes on in life. Y'all got to know we're going to come out. I'm going to give you three points and I'm going to receive. I do it like I do it at Mount Zion. Point one, note takers. Never think that you have done or made anything happen. Come on now. It says right here in the text. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary of his understanding. No one can find him. Never think that you have made anything happen. Come on now. The book of Genesis tells you that. That God created everything. And if you're real with yourself, the home that you're going back to, the car that you're driving, the clothes that you have on right now, everything that you got is a loan. 
is long to you. Right there in the text. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. That means everything located in your possessions does not belong to you. That's what they say where I come from. I know a lot of people say be long, but it don't belongs to you. <laughs> it is only borrowed because Job said, naked I came, naked I shall depart. So, another thing is that do not store up things where moth, y'all know the scripture, where I saw thou faith and thou faith in God, and when you get back home, you need to sit down and look at some of the things that you have bought that you ain't used in 10 years, got dust on it, just because you've seen it. Don't get mad with me, ladies. You should go in that club and look at clothes that you still got the tags on. Or the shoes that you ain't got out the trunk yet. Man, you should go and look at some things that you bought and told about that great weed eater and all this other stuff. And it's sitting out there in the work shed. You ain't used it. Or the lawnmower that you said would do all kind of great things. Am I right about it? Yeah. Look, look at those things and, and think on that. And remember, never think that you have done or made anything happen. Point two. Young or old, you will get tired in this world. Right there in the text. Right there in the text. Bills, people, sickness, misfortune, church folks, lies being told, don't you? Life here, it will wear you down and make you tired. I'll say it again. Y'all tell me from wrong. People, bills, Sickness, bad decision, misfortune, lies told on you, church folks, life period. Where are you down? Come on now, I got four of them. They call children. I got four of them. I'm about to talk to some of the seasoned saints. Children, where are you down? I got a mama named Isabel. We was eating up the week. I had a chance to look over at a young man. She's 80 years old. I didn't even get a chance to see my mama half grow, gray, none of that. But I used to wait on that one. Whatever stayed out of the prison, she came. One time. Children, where you got? But enjoy that one you got right there. You know what I'm saying? Because one day, they say they be on your knee and then they be on your heart. Amen. Children. But the book of James, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers. When you face trials of many kinds. Because the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In the Bible, there's a preacher in here. In this Bible, Samson will be. Come on, man. He, he got weak. Because the world, he couldn't help him. Come on. He became weak. God is the one who gives us strength. Yes, God is the one that takes care of us. No takers, last Point and I'm going to my city. Place your trust and hope in the Lord. But those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. So those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be found. Yeah. But you can always rest assured, you can turn that Bible to Psalm 1, verses 1 and 3. It says, Blessed is the man or woman who walks, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stands in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat for mockers. But his or her delight is in the Lord, 
and on his law he meditates day and night. He or she is like a tree planted by a stream of water which yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he or she does prosper. They were in captivity for 70 years. They're the strongest nation in the world. People are afraid to attack them because once they do, there's no prevail against them. They are God's chosen people. Proverbs chapter 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Right, wait. I'm going to my seat. Amen. Come on now. But the Bible says that was an event that took place. This event was not at the AT and T Center. Come on now. This event was not in Dallas Stadium. Come on. But this event, it took place in the Garden of Gethsemane, where the Bible says, yeah. I will strike the shepherd and the flock will scatter. That event took place yeah. when they arrested Jesus and gave him a mock trial. They traded him for a rabbit, a murderer. They made him carry his own cross. He carried that cross to Gal, got the hill, where they nailed him and buried him. He stayed in the grave all night Friday. He stayed in the grave all day Saturday. He stayed in the grave all night Saturday night. But early, but early, but early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. But right way, right now, he know that it might be a situation. He know right now things might not be going the way they want. But he wants you to look back and see where he brought you from. And he said, he wants all of you to say thank you for giving me life this morning. Thank you for giving me health and strength. Thank you for clothing me in my right mind. Thank you for giving me shelter in time of storm. Thank you for paying all of my bills. Thank you for removing sickness out of my body. Thank you for delivering me from a bad relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know he's all God commanded me to say this after every sermon, that God sees, that God knows, and that God hears everything. The doors of the church are now open.